Hi, my name is Alex Wong. I'm one of the clinician scientists at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, affiliated with Doheny Eye Institute. I'm going to be talking about aqueous humor outflow imaging methods that were presented at the ASCRS 2017 Glaucoma Day, as well as at the innovation session at ASCRS 2017 as well. One of the rages in glaucoma surgeries in the last 10 years has been the advent of these new trabecular targeted minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries. And what we've learned is that they absolutely work in lowering intraocular pressure, but can be inconsistent in their results. And what we mean by that is that the surgery can be done exactly the same way in two people, but you can get different intraocular pressure lowering in either of the patients. So because of this clinical observation, what's happened is that there's, be, there's arisen a new desire to understand outflow at a more fundamental level to try to improve many of these surgeries. One of the lessons that we have learned is that outflow can be very segmental in nature. And what I mean by this is that traditionally when we teach aqueous humor outflow, we start with the anatomy of Schlem's canal as being a circle around the limbus basically implying that outflow is then circumferential uniform 360 radiating away from the limbus like a flower. So using various techniques such as aqueous angiography, we've shown segmental outflow. In aqueous angiography, we're introducing tracers into the front of the eye, similar to how retina doctors put the same tracers, fluorescein and ICG, into the vein to look at retinal blood flow, but instead we're looking at aqueous humor outflow. So what you're seeing here on your left is an image of an eye where there's perilimbal segmental regions of flow, but on the right there isn't. Then using techniques like histology and OCT, we validate the signal as actually being outflow. To bring this to the clinic and to patients, we then did aqueous angiography mediated guidance of trabecular bypass. And what we did was we started with postmortem human eyes and did the angiography with endocyanine green, identifying regions with and without flow. You can see that on the left eye with the asterisk where there isn't much flow. And then we opened up the eye and performed a trabecular bypass surgery, closed the eye, and the biological question was, can low flow regions be rescued? And what you can see is that that initial low flow region now could turn bright. Histology demonstrates proper placement. While these results were very exciting and, 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 very, and the experiments were very fun, the simple fact of the matter is we were using postmortem eyes and we needed to get to the point where we were working on intact eyes of living human subjects. So in a collaboration with University of California San Diego, we performed aqueous angiography on intact eyes of living people. What you're looking at here is two rows, each row being a living person undergoing cataract surgery where we performed aqueous angiography. And you can see in the yellow arrows, there's regions where the angiographic signal grows and the white arrow regions where it goes away. So the goal of all this work is then through methods like this with aqueous angiography or others to either have intraoperative or perioperative information that then allows us to guide placement of these surgeries in customized locations for each eye for better eye pressure lowering results. Thank you.